your biopsy results from surgery show a cancer, the invasive ductal carcinoma, which is the most common type of cancer that we see in the breast. Okay. Having a hard time speaking to the camera. Oh man. This is the story of, <clears throat> come on back. This is the story of my stage zero breast cancer diagnosis. Oh, having a really hard time talking today. So, how does one find a lump? How does this story begin, buddy? You wanna share with our YouTube family what's going on? Mm, okay. It's not, it's not gonna be cancer, so it's fine. A couple days ago, I was in the shower and I noticed a lump in my right boob. Of course, you should always get that sort of thing checked out. So it was gonna be online and then they, um, on a phone call and they called me and said, we really think you should come in. I just feel, especially if we hope to travel again soon, that it's really important I take this seriously. I called my aunt and uncle who are a nurse and a doctor and they said, more than likely it's nothing. I need to be checked out, but do I need to make a three and a half hour drive right now? No. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to tiling. You're yeah, gonna sorry. On the phone. Okay, yeah, I'll be inside. Love you, buddy. Love you too. I, miss, I love your boobies too. Thank you, buddy. My gut feeling or my guardian angel told me I needed to go get it looked at. So I spent about 12 hours in the hospital one day. Here for my MRI this morning, 7.30. I went from the first checkup to an ultrasound, to a meeting with the radiologist, to an immediate mammogram. I'm nervous, but it'll be okay. And I could tell by the doctor's reactions that things weren't looking good for me. They were worried? They were worried, which worried me. Okay, just finished. I don't know why I feel emotional about it, but I do with all of these tests. So, anyways, it's done. It's done. But I was still in pretty good spirits until my family doctor's office called, asked me if I was sitting down, if I had support around me, and let me know that I had breast cancer. This was a little premature considering I didn't yet have a biopsy. So for the last month and a half, I would say I was fighting a lot of emotions. Um, just wasn't sleeping, was super, super stressed. And I finally had my biopsy appointment where they actually extract tissue to double confirm that what they're seeing is cancer. And a few nights ago, I got a call from my doctor. Oh. I think I have good news. So what it says, the final diagnosis, basically that, that biopsy did not show any cancer in it. <sighs> And uh, so you can you can stop. <laughs> hug, your, hug your husband and cry. <laughs> and my biopsy showed abnormal yada yada yada. I'm not really sure what that is. This is what some people classify as stage zero breast cancer. But my family doctor called with good news, or so we thought at the time, and said it was non-cancerous. As you can imagine, this news was such a relief. Knowing that I will need surgery to still remove the lump and have a closer look at what's actually going on in there um, was such a relief compared to the alternative. Yay, I don't have cancer! Woo! Another day, another hospital visit. Today I'm here to visit with the surgeon and hopefully find out when my appointment to have the lump removed will be. And I hope that's all. I hope it's nothing too invasive or I learn anything new or troubling, but positivity, that's all we got. I'm just a bit overwhelmed because in the room today, um, the word cancer was used a lot. Apparently what I have is stage zero breast cancer. And when they told me, I think they could tell I was really shocked and I started immediately crying and I was just like such a big word and comes with so much feeling. And um, the surgery is going to remove my lump and from there I might need radiation treatment and another surgery and plastic surgery and I know he was just warning me about all the potentials. I 
basically blacked out in the meeting and unfortunately Eamon hasn't been able to come to any of these meetings with me because of COVID. So I walked away from that one understanding that this growth is stage zero cancer and that I need to have a lumpectomy. I've been waiting for my surgery time for the past seven hours and I thought that was it. It's just a scam. Hi. <laughs> Hi, best friend. Hey guys, it's mom. Oh, oh. We thought she had a missed call. <laughs> Good afternoon, Rebecca Nancy calling from Hotel Two Days Retreat. How are you? Hi, I'm well, thanks. How are you? I don't know why I'm gonna grow. I'm doing it together, buddy. Yeah, I'm so happy you get to come in. Me too. <laughs> I was trying to tell Nancy that I've been waiting to bring you in with me. This is great. This is really good news. Just became more real, but I'm very excited to be on the other side of things. I really, yeah. night before my surgery and I'm starting to feel a little bit nervous. I think it's mostly because every time I've been to the hospital throughout this, I've received news that I wasn't really prepared for. So, hoping tomorrow's a much better day. I know it will be because Buddy gets to be there with me. And I'm really looking forward to having this little lump out of my body. Hopefully I can get some sleep. Very proud of you. Having a really tough time with words today. I think my mind is just going crazy all over the place and it's probably the reason I was debating whether or not to share this with all of you. We're just a couple of humans having a very real experience and that, yeah, that social media is such a highlight reel and even though we really try hard to share all of it, it's just easier to share the good stuff. But what I've learned over the years is that these hard times are what connect us all. So thank you for being here for me. And I hope that by sharing this story, you might feel less alone in whatever it is that you're going through. <sighs> also, I am on a fasting schedule because of my surgery. So I only have two more hours to drink lots and lots of water. Bad making breakfast in front of you. Oh, don't worry. Just eat it elsewhere. <laughs> so, so, step one is going to the hospital and getting this removed. After today's surgery, they are going to go through the lump with a fine tooth comb and just really reevaluate what that growth is and how we move forward. What I hate the most is when they put that needle in here. I can't even look at it. I'll be there holding your hand. I know. I'm so excited. Actually, I don't know if I'll be able to physically holding your hand, but probably through a piece of glass. Plexiglass or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you ready? Ready? Ready. ready. Maybe potentially no longer Earthside. 
It stinks. It stinks like a dead mouse. Oh. It's gonna be a cold drive. <laughs> No heat. So I've been treated in Kingston, which is about an hour from us, and Kingston has an amazing clinic and center for breast cancer specifically, so I know I'm in good hands anytime I walk through these doors. And now I'm allowed to come. Yeah. It makes things even better. <laughs> Have you been tested for COVID-19 due to symptoms and are awaiting results? No. Have you tested positive for COVID-19 in the last 20 days? No. In the last 10 days, have you traveled inside of Canada? No. Have you had contact with a suspected or confirmed case of COVID-19? No. So far, the nurses are really, really nice. So sweet. She even remembered our conversation from yesterday. I feel very loved. You want to help with your form? No, it's very easy. Do I have any symptoms of COVID? No. And that's pretty much it. And you have somebody waiting for you here today? Yep, yes. I'm Eamon. Awesome. And there is a waiting room um, just straight back there, okay? Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's going to look cute. I love you, baby. You're going to be great. That's it for me. Said my goodbyes, and she's on her way. Got a couple hours in the waiting room. I'll see you guys in a bit. Uh, hello? Um, her has done surgery and she's in room seven. Okay, perfect. Amazing. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Buddy. Worst part of the day was the IV. Wow, amazing. It was very quick. Everyone was so nice. Yeah, they've got a great team here. I want to write them all thank you cards because they're so nice. There she is. Bye, everybody. <laughs> you look beautiful. Don't lie to me. Oh, you got this surgery glow going on. I'm feeling very good. Glad. And the doctor had good news. I barely remember him saying it, but he said that well, from what he's seen, he doesn't think I should be good. Oh. That's the best news I've ever <sighs> I don't want to get my hopes up or anything, but that's such a relief, you know? Yeah. I didn't realize we were wearing matching hoodies today. Yeah, it's so comfy cozy. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, we got about a one hour drive. Bex in great spirits. She's looking fantastic. As it stands, I'm feeling good, but we all know that's probably because I've got some sort of drugs going on. Yeah, so we'll see you in a little bit. It's starting to snow. <laughs> dark it's getting. It's not even five o'clock. Excited for your mama to spoil you? Spoiled by everybody, but yes. Honey, I'm home. Oh. Hey. How are you? I'm good. Yeah? You didn't go right under, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Very hot. I like very hot. Can I take some pills? Yeah. <laughs> Here you go, beautiful. It's been almost five full days since my surgery and I've just really enjoyed being up here at the cabin and relaxing, watching the snow fall outside. I've had Eamon as my full-time nurse 
and he has not stopped complaining about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Today is the day I get to remove the Steri strips off of my body, and uh, I've only had one bath since, so it's definitely time to get in the shower, maybe even go for a walk today. Just feeling really, really grateful and excited to move forward. So you gotta remove those? Yeah, so these are, so all of my stitches are actually, do you want me to help? No. <laughs> <laughs> all of my stitches are actually underneath the skin and then these Steri strips, I guess, are like the exterior uh -huh. stitches. So today's the day they it Looks come really off. good, eh? Like no bruising I'm or really impressed. I'm so happy. Off to show. Been a few days since that last clip. Turns out showering can be quite exhausting. Whew. Well, today marks one week since my operation and embarrassingly enough, my first time outside since. I think the hardest part of this entire journey for me has been all of the waiting I've had to do in between everything. So pathology reports won't come back for another few weeks, which leaves me here feeling hopeful. But of course, there's that piece of me that thinks, what if? So instead of focusing too much on these what ifs, I've really been focusing on this idea that no matter how healthy we all are, what we put in our bodies we're monitoring, we're working out regularly, there are things in life that are just outside of our control. And if there's one thing I hope this video can do, it's to remind us all of that and to just go get checked, do your self exams if you're a female and yeah, we're just, we're not alone in this. And if you're going through something similar, it took me a week to do it, but this is just your reminder that getting outside in nature, get outside, breathe in a nice gulp of fresh air if you can, and uh, try to avoid frostbite if you're in Canada. It's freaking cold. I just wanna thank all of you for helping me feel less alone through all of this. Sharing has really taken a load off of my chest, and while I still have to wait, two weeks for my results. I will be sure to keep you in the loop with all of that too. <sighs> wow, getting outside really changes your mood. Morning. I woke up feeling rather anxious this morning. I feel like leading up to surgery, I was anxious for surgery and then a few days post-surgery I had a lot of relief because it was done and over. I was feeling like really good and now as we near closer to finding out more and the results yeah I just have that I have that pit in my stomach again I was doing a Q&A over on Instagram a few days ago and so many people were asking me like how do you always stay so positive like, how do you stay so strong through everything? And I guess I just want you to remember that, yeah, we're not always super strong through everything. Like, I just never want to give somebody the opinion that we don't have our struggles. So, yeah, okay, that's all for now. Nice view. You look beautiful. <laughs> Honestly, you look amazing in anything. <laughs> Even that scratchy ground. I'm glad you're here. Dude, you're sweating. I know. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. So that initial biopsy showed something called ADH, atypical ductal hyperplasia, okay. which is a benign finding, meaning not a cancer, but we will often do additional surgery to get a better sampling of that area mm -hmm. to see if there's anything else hiding in there. Mm -hmm. Your biopsy results from surgery show a cancer. Okay. I'll show you that result. And I, I'm... You know, I'm sorry, you and I have never met, yeah. okay? And and it's hard, to, this is a difficult situation, okay? Is 
Okay. Yeah. 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 And we have a good plan for you <laughs> moving forward. Okay. And and this was, you know, why we wanted to bring you in because these types of conversations are way harder to have over the telephone. Okay. So thank you for coming in. So, as you can imagine, this is not the ending to the story we were expecting, or the video I was hoping to make, or the plan I think we had for 2022. I feel like I'm like unemotional talking about this, but it's been four weeks of like kind of being in a hole and getting to the point where I can even talk to you guys about all of this. A big part for me anyways of accepting all of this was grieving what 2022 was supposed to be and all the amazing adventures we were supposed to go on and everything and I'm now reframing all of that. This is a brand new adventure. So I guess to just update you guys, we have been going through fertility treatments as I will be needing chemotherapy and surgeries and my biology of the cancer is estrogen positive. So there's potential for my ovaries um, to either need to come out or for me to be on some hormonal drugs for a long period of time, which will obviously stop our chances or really hinder our chances of having babies naturally. So that's step one. I'm gonna be losing my hair because of chemotherapy, which will be starting really soon. So I cut some bangs because I've always wanted to try that. You look amazing. <laughs> and uh, I'm working with a beautiful team of doctors and therapists, social workers, life coaches, and just doing a lot of um, energy work, reframing around everything, everything we're going through. I also wanted to say that while this is my body, this is very much a journey that Eamon and I are on together. I think in a lot of ways this can and will be harder on him. Thanks, buddy. I just love you so much. We're so blessed in so many beautiful ways. And uh, one of the therapists I most recently spoke to reminded me that we are all going to die. And just because I'm faced with this in a way that's a lot more real and intense right now, shouldn't change the fact that every day we get to wake up and live today. And that's my goal throughout all of this and for the rest of my life is to just wake up and be present and enjoy the little things and that's what we're gonna do. The main thing we're surrounding ourselves with is, is positivity. Um, she is stage three breast cancer and that mm -hmm. has to do with the biology of the, the actual cancer. And the invasive nature of it. So the lump they removed, they call it the margin so they hope to have clear margins when they remove a tumor. Mine weren't clear, they were overwhelmingly not clear. So it is stage three, but we, we don't want to dwell on that. Yeah, it's the least important part of this story for me. Um, I don't dwell on it. It's, it's not hanging over my head because I don't feel like that. My intuition is really strong. I'm going to respond really well to chemotherapy. Yeah. I'm trusting my body and I know I'm going to be okay. Um, I know I'm going to have some really dark, bad days, but I have amazing support in our families and our friends and all of you guys too. So in a lot of my soul searching these past couple of weeks, I feel like a lot of my purpose here in this world is um, to share. And we have this platform for a reason and to help bring positivity and joy, yes, but to also help us all understand how we can find that in the little things every single day. We want to share, but we won't be doing weekly episodes like you guys know from us. I think when we do upload it, it'll be on a Sunday. So we'll try yeah. to stick to that. Um, the next video will likely be about our fertility journey. Making babies. Making babies and... And trust me, that was an incredible, I'm so proud of you, the way you just, anyway, we'll save that for another video, but <sighs> holy smokes. Everyone, I know there, there's gonna be a lot of love and mm -hmm. you know send us your positivity we yes. appreciate it positivity only we are not on google we are not um we're just trusting intuition we're staying really positive i'm trusting the guidance of the amazing doctors i have around me and the amazing team i'm building around me i'm trusting myself i'm trusting you and yeah so i love you guys so much thank you for being a part of this journey thank you for being like a really safe space 
that we can share all of this so openly. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. We'll see you someday. <laughs> we'll see you some Sunday soon. <laughs> Love you, baby. Love you too.